thank uh, Representative Grossman and Cottinger and for the chance to uh, to be part of this uh, uh, remarkable event today. Um, this, uh, I believe, is the beginning of Ohio uh, making its step back to competitiveness. Uh, we've had a 30-year slide in our state's economic uh, fortunes, and you know this is the day that we start changing that and moving back again. My name is Jack Boyle. I'm chairman of a group called uh, Citizens United to End Ohio's Estate Tax for the past year and a half. We've been circulating petitions around the state to put a measure before the General Assembly to do exactly uh, what the, the bill that will be introduced today will do. And we are uh, very, very pleased to, to see us uh, get to this point. Uh, the <coughs> previous speakers have talked a little bit about the perversities of Ohio's estate tax, and we have lots and lots of, uh, of data and studies and that kind of thing. If anybody from the media is interested, we've got copies of different things and studies uh, by the, the Department of Revenue in, in Connecticut that demonstrated that the estate tax drove people uh, physically to move out of the state. Um, in, in working over the last year and a half on this issue, uh, we put together a coalition of uh, people. We have 1,600 volunteers in every uh, county and every community in the state. We have more than 80,000 people sign the petitions. Uh, we had a coalition of groups uh, that you know, helped us and supported us, endorsed our campaign, the Farm Bureau, of course, the Ohio Manufacturers Association, the Ohio Funeral Directors Association, the uh, um, Cattlemen's Association, you know, many, many groups beyond just business groups, though. The Ohio Christian Alliance endorsed our, our uh, campaign. It's, I think someone made the point that this tax is, is essentially unfair. It is double, triple, quadruple taxation. The assets that are taxed by the estate tax have been taxed many, many times before. Uh, all virtually of the grassroots organizations that sort of popped up here in the last political cycle, the Tea Party groups and the 912s, those groups also endorsed the campaign. And so it, it is uh, a, a remarkable uh, uh, kind of coming together, if you will, of people from all different parts of the state, all different uh, areas that uh, you know, realize that this is, this is the time to start this movement back for Ohio. Uh, you know, we've had various comparisons about how bad our tax is with other states that have it. The fact of the matter is 30 states don't have any tax whatsoever. When someone passes away, it simply is not an issue. And so, um, you know, we're recognizing our state tax represents essentially a 7% incentive uh, for capital to not come to Ohio or to leave Ohio. And when we take away that incentive, that capital has no longer that disincentive to, you know, to contribute to our economy. Uh, Representative Hottinger mentioned Larry Wolpert, and I want to mention him also. I worked with him while he was still in the House, and he was uh, you know, one of the early people who continually worked on this issue. Uh, uh, he was very helpful you know, as we kind of got our campaign up and running, too. And so you know, when, we, when we pop the champagne bottle, when this happens, we'll certainly want to have Larry here. In any case, this is a great day for Ohio. I'm, I'm glad to see you across the South. Thank you, Jack. Thank you. To add that, you know, I, I, like Representative Grossman, uh, come from a local government background, as do most of my colleagues here. And I'm certainly s uh, sensitive and sympathetic uh, to the situation that they're in. Uh, but I have to say that I'm much more sim sensitive and sympathetic to the hardworking Ohioans, you know, who have had to endure uh, this tax uh, for too many years. And you can make the argument that Ohio's local governments have unjustly benefited uh, for too long because of, of this unfair tax. And you know, betting on how many people in your uh, local jurisdiction or who is going to die in any given year is just not sound uh, budgeting process. And so uh, we believe that this is part of what we're going to see in, in the days and weeks and months ahead, uh, part of the reforming of government on the state and local level and how those services are going to be delivered and that this should be part of the package of a reform of, of local government uh, services. You know, it comes back to this comfort level of this is how we've always operated in Ohio. It's a new day. We have got to be innovative and think outside the box on how we're going to move forward on behalf of the people of Ohio. This is not our money, or this should not be uh, the government's money. This should be about the, the, the hard-working assets uh, that hardworking Ohioans have, have accumulated over the course of their life. And again, when you think of it being at $338,000, we're talking about middle class folks. 
This is a middle class impact that, that hits small businesses, that hits farmers, and that hits squarely Ohio's middle class uh, citizenry. People respond to incentives. And right now we're incentivizing our, our entrepreneurs, our best and brightest, the ones that accumulate wealth to leave the state of Ohio. And uh, they don't just take their, their dollars, they take their entrepreneurial spirit. They go to Florida, they go to Arizona, they go to other places, and they start businesses. They look for opportunities, it's what they do, it's how they're wired. And they find a way to start businesses in other places. And boy, it'd be nice to have that back in Ohio. Not just their volunteer, not just their dollar that they donate, but the entrepreneurial spirit and more of that to stay in Ohio. Representative Grossman, you mentioned a couple times that cities will be able to make up this somehow. Um, and can you provide some examples of how you foresee either through revenue growth or through some other legislation that they're going to be able to do that? I, be, I believe with the restructuring of the Department of Development that we're going to see Ohio move in a very positive direction. Uh, and I think that that's the fair and equitable way to be able to fund uh, these local governments uh, that will be prosperous and permanent compared to an unknown double tax that we're dealing with at this point in time. Sorry, are you just saying that job growth is going to make up for this? Is that I believe that will be a huge part of how we are able to um, fill in any gaps in that regard. Uh, we are aggressively going to be uh, working with the, the administration on how we get jobs here. When you hear the 400, 500,000 jobs that have left the state of Ohio, 90% of those have gone to other states, not overseas, not other countries. And we want to fix Ohio in many different ways. We want us to be business friendly, and I believe that we're going to be successful. In I think it's safe to say uh, that in the days and weeks and, and short months ahead, that the, how state government and how local government functions, and what services are delivered, and how those services are delivered, are going to be transformed unlike they have ever been in the history of the state of Ohio. And so what I am suggesting is, is that the elimination of the estate tax is a part of that package of a, of a uh, significant reforming of, of local government. And so today is not the day where all of those are going to be unveiled, but I think you're going to see from the administration as well as from, uh, from this caucus other initiatives that are really going to transform how services are delivered to Ohioans, both on the state and on the local level. If you were to say that, that, that someone spent an entire life investing in Ohio, creating jobs in Ohio, paying their taxes in Ohio, and they had the audacity at the end of their life to amass $338,000 that they're somehow rich, uh, I would say that uh, that's certainly not the case. And so, yes, this clearly does impact uh, middle class uh, Ohioans. You know, when you think about these, I like referring, and I refer to it today as the estate tax because that's what it is, but I really like to refer to it as the death tax because when you talk about state, you say, oh, that's, that's something that, you know, I mentioned Dave Thomas, and I mentioned Howard Metzenbaum, and there's, you know, all those uh, wealthy individuals that are out there. But the, the fact of the matter of it is, is that the way this tax is structured in the state of Ohio, with our low exemption, the lowest in the nation, we squarely are hitting not just wealthy people, but hardworking Ohioans, small business people, and farmers. And uh, we've all outlined here, and Representative Peterson's done a great job of saying, you know, uh, that, that insanity has to stop, and the exodus has to stop. You know, I don't know how many people uh, who've accumulated any sorts of assets, uh, you know, there's people that I'm not comfortable giving you their names personally, but we all know people who have left the state of Ohio and my local community and, and all of our local communities. And as I said before, it's not the sunshine and it's not the Gulf that drives many Ohioans on their deathbeds uh, to the state of Florida and, and Arizona. It's the egregious policy and tax uh, structure that we have in place in the state of Ohio. And today is the day that we start to reverse that. I would separate, I mean, small business, when we talk about small business people and business people leaving the state of Ohio, going to going to places to avoid the tax. In most cases, farming operations, why it's such a big deal for farming operations is we don't have that opportunity to move. It's much more difficult for us to move our, our land base, our operations, our contacts to another state to, to take advantage of that. So, so that's why it's so uh, such an important agriculture, and it's uh, quite a part of it, because you know, if you pay for a farm that your grandfather paid for and your father paid for, and now you get the opportunity to pay for it again. 
because of the mistake tax. Yeah, probably 200 companies in the last two years. And uh, as I meet with them to say, you know, what could we do better? How could Ohio be more business friendly to you? This is something that is consistently uh, brought up as an issue, and those are a lot of the decision makers that choose where they're going to be located. We are so competitive with other states, we have got to get our economy gone. And by doing that, we need to make Ohio attractive on many fronts. And uh, for me to hear this from the people that are running these companies, I think is a huge statement on how uncompetitive we are. And, and keep in mind, we're not talking about doing something uh, revolutionary here. Uh, 30 states have already done this. Uh, and, and there are some states that but I would even describe as progressive states that have already done this. So Ohio is already uh, in the minority. We're one of 20 states. On top of that, to make it worse, is that we have you know, a, a tax rate that ranges between 2 to, to 7%, and we also have the lowest threshold by far of when this tax takes effect. And so again, you know, the, the, we're not going to drop off a clip here by going down the route that 30 other states have already preceded us. We have to take some pretty bold steps to be able to get us out of the downward spiral we're in. And I believe that it's important for people to know that have elected us that we mean what we said, and we are going to do all we can to el eliminate this estate tax, and it's a very unfair tax. And the impact on the state is so minimal, it's $60 million, but the impact on families and collectively uh, on Ohioans is great and significant. And so, you know, I would make the argument that this should have been ended a long time ago, and so today's the day that we start the process to kill the, de the death tax here in the state. We have time for one more question. Some city uh, officials that I've talked to have said, even though even if they're not <clears throat> hugely concerned about it, losing estate tax revenue, they are hugely concerned that this will be piled on top of a cut in the local government fund. What can what assurances can you give cities and, and townships and uh, villages right now about whether or not they're they're going? To, you're talking about double taxation. How do you talk talk about the double cut that they can face? And we've had those discussions. I know there's concern on local government and. It's our library system as well as um, as well as townships and cities. I believe that we will do all that we can uh, to be cognizant of those concerns with local government funds. We want people to be successful, but it's a balance of many different issues to be successful as we move forward on behalf of the state. We need business, and uh, we cannot be comfortable in the status quo of what has been the process here in Ohio for so many years. It's time for us to innovate and to solve many of our problems. I want to thank everyone for being here today and certainly we'll be available uh, for our offices if you have further follow-up.